Morning. First acrylic since last Thursday. The three watercolours on Monday which I uploaded yesterday, mainly because my internet was down. So what I've got here is my palette. These have been laid out, these acrylics, on the Stay Wet palette on a membrane which is on a few layers of kitchen paper sprayed with water. So we've got black, uh, burnt umber, raw, uh, burnt sienna, ultramarine, cadmium red, white of course, orange, yellow ochre, uh, mid yellow and some viridian. Now it's, it's as, as nice as I left it, as uh, liquid as I left it, it hasn't dried out. The orange has leached through just a tiny bit into the membrane underneath. And what I'm going to do, well, have a go. The, one of the watercolours I did yesterday, uh, Monday, this is the board Beacons, I called it. I'm going to just do sort of abstract that, make a version of it. I'm not going to copy it, I'm just going to use it as a, as a guide and see how we get on. Right, up to the, up to the board. Uh, bear with me with the movement right okay let's I'll just move this out of the way so I don't show in the video I'll try not to show in the video right there we are uh, this is a piece of watercolor paper doesn't matter what it is what weight it is it doesn't really matter it's got a couple of coats well one coat either side of PVA glue diluted a little bit of water to make it flow a bit better and I've, I've put it in another coat of PVA glue with some plaster of Paris mixed spread around not too evenly I have to say but but anyway it's quite a rough surface now and when it's wet with the plaster I go for the kitchen towel try not try to make sure there are no creases in it otherwise it will come out on the indents and then I just go like that all over and then take out any regular patterns and then dry it with a hairdryer and we've got a nice surface to, to work on. So I'm going to, it's quite a large painting for, um, right I'm going to use this inch and a half Pro Art hog brush, a varnish brush, it's quite thin that way, it's like, it's like a stiff hake. Um, and my colours are mainly the cheap Wilkinson's acrylics, £1.50 for a tube that size, 200 millilitres, very very good value, excellent value. Uh, so I'll start with putting some mountains in, uh, I'll spray the paper first, if I can find me spray. I'm still searching for stuff after the demonstrations I did at the Cells and Art Group last Thursday evening. It's quite a lot of work involved, apart from the actual demonstrations is... I've lost a mail on that. Little stud has come out of that. It's not very good pro art, you better do a bit better than that. Right, okay, so... Um, I'll put in uh, the, the mountains, I'll use a bit, a bit of red and a bit of blue. And just this will be changed. This is just a just a guide, a bit of black in with that. can mix a bit of white in with that just to get a little bit of, bit of mistiness. This doesn't exist by the way, it's just a just an abstract. Just trying to make a a painting. I, I want these because the mountains were quite diffuse, I want to Get this soft. Well, I put the thicker paint on. That'll do. Uh, so I'm going to bring the sky into the landscape and the landscape into the sky. So we will put in some more nice colour, a bit of, bit of black and a bit of red. 
I've done several of these, but they all end up differently. I'm not sure about putting the rocks in, and we're going for some yellow. Uh, a bit of white in for that, I think. Let's get different plains, hills, and then some warm. Sienna and a bit of red, a bit of the green. And I'll go over that with a bit of, bit of yellow. Just, just, just warming up the, the foreground really. But I want the warm colours in the, in the foreground, the warm greens. Nice light in there. Okay, that's just a little bit light, but let's put in the uh, I'm going to knock a, a nail through there, a, a panel like a veneer pin through there and bend it and just cut it off. It's not really falling apart. I mean, these are such good brushes. It'll take a bit of cleaning, though. No? Oops, sorry. Oh, look, that's very, very wiggly. Right. Good mind to take it back. Okay, we, we can put a bit of mist in with that as well, I think, as that dries, but let's put a bit of sky in. So I want a dark broody sky, so I'm going to mix up a bit of, bit of blue, a bit of red, a bit of white. A really nice dark colour. That. It's great having a spray to uh, to lubricate the, the rough surface of the paper. So we've got to get some light into that. So let's go back. I won't clean the brush. I'll just go back with my blue and my red. Okay, well that's interesting, but let's go back to another an inch brush now, an inch pro art brush. And we can get some some warm on here. Don't like that. The thing is you can change very quickly with acrylic as you know. Let's have a bit of Viridian, a uh, bit of Viridian mixed in. This is abstract, but the unrealistic colours, but I really want the cooler ones in this background here. I'm going to put my trees in. 
over that. And that's uh, got a bit of, bit of misty, misty colour in there. If I get some colour, nice. I'm going to drag over the, the high spots in this now. Right, let's get that dark blue. Shadow. some colour. Oops. Or some light cloud with the uh, the sun shining through. There's a little bit of lights here and there. Well, oh, I just missed the shadows a bit, I think. Right, now we can put the colours back now. Okay, that's coming on. Let's put in some trees now. We could do much more in here. I'm not, so I'll show you that that's what I'm working from. <coughs> but I want to do more to the sky, but, but uh, we have to move around a bit. So black and yellow, a bit of red, a lot of black. And put in these, these trees and they darker, more black. No, more black. Black and yellow make lovely, lovely greens. And a bit of red just warms it up a little bit. Try to, to make the, all the trees look different from each other. We don't want anything symmetrical. We can help it. And just follow the form of that slope there a little bit. And just go out to here. Now, I want to just get some colour. OK. 
Okay. Give some nice light catching on these slopes. I'm going to put some dark in here and I might try to put in some, some of those those rocks but I want some misty sort of sort of colour in here now. It's just light colours give an impression that we've got some light on the edges of the slope okay I need I'm gonna have a lot of warm in there but I'll, I can put some some little flicks of red here and there just as a bit of interest and a bit of shadow now coming from these clouds going across so I'm going to reinstate Right, let's go back into this this sky now. Bit of white, bit of ochre, bit of bit of orange, just so go wild. When you're doing clouds, don't just put, make it look as if some of them are going behind the landscape, otherwise it looks as if you're just filling a gap. Right, let's go to the dark cloud now. Darkish cloud. Blue and red, that's all we need. A bit more blue. And then we're in state. A bit, of, a bit of that misty colour. Mist, slightly blue on the mountain. That's where the light's catching on this side here. Put in some light in the, in the back of that now. Bit of ochre. Indicating sort of fields, fields, grassy slopes, tree line. Yeah, that's a nice lot of light in there. Put a bit of red in there as well, I think. Just a bit of contrast to those lovely greens. Right, we'll put we'll in some uh, some foreground now. I don't know that I left. No. So nice red, yellow, black. Need 
these are sort of bushes. Okay, very simple. Bit of stipple there. You know, we just create an impression of something, but but no portraits. This is a bit of the uh, bit of warm sienna and red. Bit of yellow. So I haven't used any burnt umber. Quite like that actually. I might not do anything to that. I might add any rocks. Just a bit, bit of highlight. Try to connect that with with this landscape by putting in some some trees. Maybe those trees are just a little bit too big in the middle there. But we can change that quite quickly. So we just keep that soft. Okay, well they, they were calling big trees, or what? Or what? No, I think I know that's a bit thick. Okay, well let's not, let's not, let's just put a bit of warm in that to foreground. Okay, I'm not sure I want to do much more to it than that really. Uh, perhaps there's just a little bit of detail in oh I've got, got a hair there. Well we we won't have for much longer. Consider that gone. Just some sort of bushes. Just to give a bit of bit of interest to a, an empty space, although empty spaces are lovely. Nothing wrong with an empty space, I have to get somewhere here. Got a lovely lot of colours in there. Sort of thing you see on a on a Dartmoor type of landscape. There's not a lot of brightness in it, is there? So maybe we'll uh, 
I had just a little bit, bit of, bit of bright. Okay, well we'll put it in the mouth and see what we've what we've got. Don't want to spend much more time on it. But I'll just stick it to the board and remove my clips. And we'll put it in, in a nice amount. Uh, right, here we are. So what have we got four ground distance mood. Let's bring it around. We'll have that little, little look at it. So there we are, that's uh this is not dissimilar to what I've done. So it just goes to show that I wasn't copying it. I've done a very similar one, but I didn't put the rocks in. And the rocks rocks are very easy to do in watercolour. Provided the paper scrapes with the card quite easily, but it's a bit different kettle of fish here. But I didn't want to overload the detail, but we put I put a little bit of red in here and there just to give some complement to the to the, the greens. The, the black and the yellow of the mid yellow makes a beautiful green, really rich dark, and you can modify it by putting a bit of uh, red in with it as well. So there we are, we've got a bit of a storm coming over, storm over Dartmoor, Dartmoor storm, Bob Mint storm, something like that. It's, it, it doesn't exist, as you know, but it's very uh, reminiscent of, uh, of uh, English moorland memories, really. There would be more fields in this, but I don't want to show them. I've indicated fields here and light and I've got a nice bit of light in the sky so I hope you enjoyed that thanks for all if you want to zoom in and you can see those little bits let's go down to the foreground now very simple stippled mostly lots of colour lots of warm colour it gives a support to the rest of the painting which has got which has got quite a few cool colours the viridian and the yellow and the white make fabulous greens, fabulous, lovely little luminous, almost. Right, I'm going to get that uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.